Hello. This short talk does not present completed research, but gives an outline of current and future study. The work has been delayed by the temporary loss of access to local newspaper collections. The study is a development from what was originally an MA dissertation written for the University of Leeds School of History in 2013 entitled Britain in the 1930s, The Failure of Peace. This was later much expanded and made available on a website in 2018. That study focused on three of the most significant political developments of the decade, organised chronologically, though with considerable overlaps. Firstly, the peace movements in the early part of the decade. Secondly, British fascism in the middle years. And thirdly, Britain and the Spanish Civil War in the years before the final descent into war, all leading to a growing recognition of the inevitability of a renewed armed conflict. During my reading for that study, I came across a number of references to Leeds and the wider local area, and I've been interested in going further into the same three aspects from a local perspective. This study does not therefore aim at a history of Leeds in the 1930s in general, for example its social or commercial development, but to investigate how one area of the country reflected and was affected by events on the national level. One reason for my original interest in the 1930s was that my parents were born in the 1920s and I had known little about the following decade when they were growing up. Additionally, they were both born in the West Riding, and for them Leeds was a great attraction. My mother being brought to Lewis's, which opened in September 1932 when she was six, when she was living in South Elmsall and travelling to school in Pontefract in the late 1930s. These photographs indicate the dramatic changes being made to the city centre at that time. The references to this area that I look forward to following up when it becomes possible again include firstly how the national peace ballot of 1934 to 5 was reported in Leeds, the political attitudes of the local press compared with the highly partisan and politically divided views of the national press, and local Quaker views of pacifism post World War I. Secondly, Leeds having one of the largest and most significant Jewish populations in the UK, their economic and social development and the level of local anti-Semitism are of great relevance to the targeting of Leeds by the British Union of Fascists. One of the most significant events in this connection was the Battle of Holbeck Moor in September 1936, a few days before the more dramatic and violent events in Cable Street which had more far-reaching political consequences. Thirdly, one of the most significant local connections with the Spanish Civil War was the reception given to uh, refugees. There was involvement with the national campaign to assist the Basque children in Leeds, Bradford, Keithley, Halifax and Huddersfield. This was in the face of a right-wing opposition. A Manchester Tory MP called for the little Basque devils to be sent home. And there is also information about Leeds volunteers in the international brigades. On the first question, I have letters written by a great aunt in the 1930s, including one in January 1939. She was a Quaker, pacifist and socialist teacher born in Hanging Heaton near Dewsbury. And she tells her family about preparations for war and the desperate desire to avoid it. She reflects the pacifism of the time and the lengths Quakers and other pacifists would go to to appease Hitler. For the Czechs, turned out of their homes, ordered to live in a Nazi state, even this is better for them than war. I think that Chamberlain is doing the right thing, but for the wrong, i.e. capitalist reasons could do a much finer thing by giving some of our colonies or some of our trading rights to Germany, for they are a more numerous nation than we are and have as much right to the tea of Ceylon, 
the cotton of India, etc., as we have. This sounds very close to the extreme pacifist proposal to return German overseas colonies lost in 1919 to the Nazis. It does not require hindsight to see this as a very naive and possibly immoral position. Ignorant of the genocidal racism practiced by German colonists in Southwest Africa before World War I. One could say literally practiced in preparation for the Nazi atrocities 30 years later. This was a controversial view at the time. Rose McCauley, the novelist who recanted her pacifism in 1940, wrote in May 1939, Occasionally when reading some letters in Peace News, I and others half think we have got hold of the black shirt by mistake. There was a charge in the Daily Telegraph of Peace News being used as a channel for Nazi propaganda. There was too much sympathy for the German position, often the product of ignorance and superficial thinking, seeing any compromise with Hitler as infinitely preferable to a general European war. Who was for Munich? Apart from many pacifists, one answer to the question is Mosley and the fascists. And this second issue is starkly illustrated. This is probably not an event in Leeds, but could have been, or any city, especially in the north, with large Jewish populations. The third topic can be seen in these final pictures. The, on the left, a photograph from the Mexper and Swinton Times in the West Riding. Again, the location of the march on the right is not specified. The banner in the background is carried by members of a Manchester group. This is as far as I've got so far. My sources include personal memoirs, local historical works, works on British communism, kinder transport, the, the secret library in Leeds libraries, and the Leeds University Group on Defence Policy, who was for Munich. The fuller study will make use of local press reports, editorials, letters to the editor, etc. And I intend for these to be compared with national newspaper accounts and other sources. Thank you.